On this episode of Sides, we get to the bomb of what we really want from a smartphone. I think these phones are a sign of progress. And we tackle one of the weirdest and spiciest internet challenges. I think it's funny when people do stuff that's kind of stupid. And then we talk about what's too far with culture and comedy. If you're unfortunate enough to think it, and, and then you should be unfortunate enough to say it. Hey, Layla, what do you do when you get mugged by a cat? Are you kidding me? C call claw enforcement. It's like because they have claws. They're cats. Okay. Meow. Oh my god. Hey guys, how are you guys doing? All right. <laughs> right there. <laughs> good, good. We have lots to talk about. Today we are talking about violence in Texas, dumb phones, one chip challenge, and Larry David's humor. Mm. But we're going to start off with our okay no ways. My friend? Oh, thank you. Okay, I'm gonna open up with this huge okay, and it's basically in LA. They've been considering starting a program where they'd hire homeless people to clean up garbage on their streets around their city. And I think this is a huge okay, number one, because, you know, it's great PR for the city. But more importantly, I mean, there's garbage all over. We're, we're from Toronto, and it's great to see them hiring these people in need rather than go towards, you know, just some random company. Mm -hmm. I think it's trying to do good, no matter how little. Oh, amazing. My no way is uh, something pretty terrible. Um, Brianna oh, Brochu, I'm oh, sure many yeah. of you have heard the story. She was a former student at the University of Hartford and basically she had a roommate, a black roommate who she yeah. didn't like and she made a lot of posts to social media about disgusting things she'd do involving her bodily fluids. She, she took her used tampons and rubbed it on her roommate's backpack. Finally, when she moved out, she was uh, she created a celebratory post saying, glad the Jamaican Barbie is gone, oh my allegedly. God, right. And in my opinion, this is not only vile, but what I find even worse is all the people who saw the post and didn't say nothing yeah. for so long. Because, yeah. I mean, yeah. if you were liking those posts or commenting, I think you're complicit, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. And uh, she's no longer there. They might be pursuing hate crimes, and I hope they do. Me too. Hate nice. charges. Frank? So, my okay this week is Canada's amazing governor general, Julie Payette, really speaking her mind about uh, religion, astrology, and climate change. And she herself, she's an accomplished astronaut, an engineer, and an amazing scientist. And she was at a science conference and basically talked about how white people are still really debating certain things about these topics. And people online were like, oh my god, you're the governor general, you cannot say anything. But really, let her speak. She's saying things in a positive manner. She's saying it in a comedic manner. Let her speak. Like, come on. And my no way this week, an issue that deeply, deeply affects me, is people that, people who are against people who celebrate Christmas early. Like, come on. Let me celebrate <laughs> Christmas in November in peace. Okay, full disclosure, like, you celebrate end of October. Okay. <laughs> uh, sorry. <laughs> um, no, honestly, it has so many... In my opinion, I've benefited a lot from it. I've had health benefits and stress. Like, I mean, it's just amazing. Let people listen to Christmas music. Guys, come on. <laughs> oh my god. Michael? So my okay for this week is uh, the Canadian Down Syndrome Society's uh, new campaign. It's called Anything But Sorry. And it talks uh, a little bit about how we approach uh, new coming parents who have children with Down syndrome. And I want to show you all a clip first. You can say almost anything. Like, holy shit. You just had a baby. Shit, yeah. See, you can say almost anything. The truth is, the only bad word is sorry. 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 You're supposed to be celebrating. See, I think it's like, it's so important. You know, I feel like when we don't understand things, we tend to judge them. And so I feel like this is, it's, it's important. It doesn't matter if your child is, is born with a, you know, a syndrome or a condition, it doesn't matter. You know, we should be celebrating new life. Uh, my no way for this week is a woman from North Carolina winning two lottery tickets. <laughs> Man, yo, she won a, a $10,000 ticket first, and then the next one was $1 million. In the same day. Right? Yeah, in the same day. And I was just like, man, the whole lottery to me is so problematic. Like, we could be using all that money to, like, fund houses, people, exactly. small businesses, all these things, and I just feel like, ugh, all the money in one person's hands is so wrong. Oh, man. 
So my okay of the week is uh, this really cool thing called Women of NASA, and it's this new Lego set that got recently released, and it's super cool because it features four women in Na uh, from NASA who were like pioneers in creating what NASA is and the whole space agency and everything. And I think it's rad because first it like um, introduces young kids to the idea of science and females in science, which is really needed. And I know that because I'm in a science field and there's not a lot of women out there. And I also think it's a really cool and fun way to honor these women who really changed the world. So I'm so for it. My no way of the week is movie spoilers. So Thor Ragnarok came out really recently. And I like, I'm super like a big fan. I'm a really big fan. And I'm just, I couldn't go and see it on opening night. And I like, I've been really busy with school. I've had midterms and stuff. And it just kills me when people start going on the internet, start posting spoilers. Like the best part of the movie is like the suspense and not knowing what's coming next. So honestly, people need to get over it. Stop posting spoilers. Mm -hmm. You watched it yet? No. No? Let's, Let's talk about something else. I'm not about this. What's next? <laughs> Las Vegas, Orlando, Virginia Tech, Sandy Hook, and now Sutherland Springs, Texas. Recently, a man walked into a church in rural Texas and shot and killed at least 26 people. When it happened, it was declared the fifth deadliest mass shooting in modern American history. It comes just over a month after the deadliest mass shooting in modern American history when 58 people were killed at a music festival in Las Vegas. The New York Times recently published a chart illustrating the staggering statistics around mass shootings in America. And the frequency of this violence raises the question of whether we've become desensitized to it. Barack Obama suggested as much in 2015. We've become numb to this. We talked about this after Columbine and Blacksburg, after Tucson. How do you feel when you hear about a mass shooting? Have you become desensitized to violence? This really is a big topic for me because I'm American, right? And so this is happening in my country and something I identify with. And it irritates me. And I definitely think we are desensitized because no one's done anything. I think that we can put in place a few boundaries to allow people who want to have guns to have guns safely and to allow people who are going to use those guns irresponsibly to not have access to guns. So for me, the whole desensitivity comes from we haven't done anything. And the two things I think we need to do is implement background checks on every single gun sale, private or business owned. And we need to institute a um, gun safety course for first time gun owners. And I just want to get back to the fact that it's not about taking away guns and the second amendment or anything like that, but it comes down to making sure that the people who are going to use guns irresponsibly do not have access to guns. And this whole desensitivity comes because we haven't done anything. I, okay, I'm someone who, we, we've talked about, we, we have very similar opinions on gun control, but I think what issue we want to focus on right now is thinking about, I almost zoned out when you were speaking because this is something I've heard so many times. And I'm someone who supports it, and I've heard it so many times. And what, I remember when Obama made that Sandy Hook speech, and I thought, okay, I'm going to always stay on the ball. I'm going to be aware of each one. I'm going to try to fight and bring these laws or my opinions out there. This Texas shooting was the first time that I honestly missed, quote unquote, a shooting. <clears throat> I mean, I'd seen the post online. I read a brief comment about shooting in Texas, but. My brain didn't even register it because there had been so much. I mixed it up with another. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I feel like see, what, what, hearing you, Layla, and hearing you, Teddy, like it, it hurts me because I'm not desensitized to it, and it hurts me every time I see mass shootings like these because it happens so often. But I put myself in those positions where I'm thinking. I heard about there were eight members of the same family who died, and I'm thinking that could be my dad, that could be my mom, that could be my uncle and his two kids. It could be people closest to me and it scares me to think that one day I might die I'm gonna ha get a hashtag for one month and people are gonna forget about me because they're desensitized that I hurts think, I think I think with politics I, I, th I really do think I've been in politics since I was nine years old and it really really disappoints me that politicians aren't doing anything about this I mean these are prof they understand their people in their in their districts they're dying and all we ask for them is to maybe compromise, talk to each other, mm -hmm. like just talk to each other. You don't need to be in the other room with your special interest. Just talk to each other, but find a solution, we're, we're please. This is, I want to bring this back to us. And I saw someone on, on Twitter who actually said this with the hashtag my side, Oliver said, I hate to admit, but I'm totally desensitized. We are exposed to so much violence in the media all day, every day. So although my initial reaction is deep sadness, I don't find myself dwelling on it for very long. And I agree with them, not because I want to, 
but just because it's, it's the honest reality. I mean, we are having shootings. This shooting happened less than two months yeah. uh, after, after the most recent largest shooting in US history. Yeah. I mean, how long can we even mourn, mourn for? Yeah. I think, I think that's disgusting. That's disgusting because yeah. we've, we've been with each other for like three months now and this is the second time talking about a mass shooting. Exactly. This is horrible. Like, And we need to go back and find the people who are doing this and, and make sure that they understand and start building in our communities to help people get better. Like, Because I don't care if you have a, a mental condition, if you're, if you're Muslim, if you're Catholic, if you're whatever, if you are going to go and do all these things, that's disgusting. And we need to fix these problems and go back to our communities and find the problem. It doesn't surprise me anymore at this point. And I think that the governments become ignorant at this point because they fail to realize, you know, the big issues that allow these things to keep happening. It is obvious that violence is wrong, yet we indulge in it so much, so much that so much so that people actually make a profit off of it. And I think we have to take a look at how we normalize it and how we encourage that behavior. Dumb phone's a very accurate name, because I think they're dumb, and they're, they're most certainly phones. Oh, I had this! Yeah! <laughs> I had this and I had this. Oh, this is like my first phone. Now this is completely obsolete, I mean... <laughs> wh why? The keyboard's really small, and the screen is really small, too. I duh. Does that look like a house phone? This is a home, this is a home phone. That was a cell phone. No. Why would you? Why would this be a cell phone? The technology was probably really bad back then, so people probably paid a lot of money to just have one of these bricks, which I think is kind of great. Uh, I've never broken my phone before, but I know many friends who'd really benefit from something that wouldn't uh, get smashed if you shatter it onto concrete. This one is cool though, because it's like light. I would actually, I would buy this, to be honest. I would probably use it as my everyday phone. Wait, there's letters by these numbers. Is that what that means? Is you have to like, bruh. If I had one of these phones and I was sitting on the toilet, like, would I just click buttons and try to make little songs out of the, the dial tones? There's nothing to do. I had to type, you have to type like, the letters, like, Three times. It's so annoying. What if you were angry and you had to like send like a paragraph and you had to be like click the button 15 times or whatever? They could, you know. They're, they're, they're. <laughs> you charge this, right? Uh, I kind of wish I had an antenna attachment on my phone just so people knew when I was about to take a call. Hey, can you not talk to me? I'm on the phone right now. What is that? For the the businessman on the go who needs to walk through tunnels. This gives you that extra bit of range to maybe make it on the outside. This is so lame. Is that an antenna? Did you seriously have to pop up the antenna to make a phone call? I'm so shook right now. I just need to take a minute. <laughs> How'd you guys like get by? Does the idea of a dumb phone appeal to you? Apple recently released the iPhone X, and people around the world lined up to get it, despite the fact that it has a hefty price tag. Smartphones have become a social norm. According to the Pew Research Center, 46% of American smartphone owners say their smartphone is something they couldn't live without. But some are choosing to fight that dependency by buying dumb phones that only send texts and make calls. No social media, no apps, no distractions. Those in favor of basic phones argue that they help promote relaxation and efficiency. But others say smartphones are a sign of progress and the pros outweigh the cons. What do you think? Would you buy a non-smartphone? Or are you happy being connected all the time? So here's my thing. I feel like it doesn't matter if you have a smartphone or a dumb phone. I think all of it is irrelevant. Because, and, I, and it goes back to me saying that our generation is lazy. We're always looking for an excuse or something to blame on why we're, why we're not being productive or why we're not interacting with more people. It's like, it doesn't matter if you have either phone. If you wanted to make a change in your life to find the time to make time for people to interact, then you would do that. It doesn't matter if you have a smartphone or a dumb phone. And all of this whole conversation is just dumb to me. <laughs> it's stupid. It's stupid. 
I think it's a self-control issue. Yeah, absolutely. Just people going all out. And I, these yeah. dumb phones ain't cheap. These, these have some pretty hefty price yeah. tags just for someone who's too lazy to delete, you know, a couple apps on What do you mean? Okay. I woke up at 3 a.m. the day Apple released iPhone 10, and I bought it. You know what? Because I think these phones are a sign of progress. And I think to achieve real equality in this world, I think governments should make it smartphones free to every single teenager, honestly. Oh, 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 not necessarily the politician. No, I'm going home. I'm done. That's Hold the on. Politician. Let me jump in here because I can I can agree with Frank. Like I Thank think you. I think smartphones. I don't agree with you, the whole. I don't agree with politicians giving smartphones to people equals equality. But I think that smartphones allow children and people from of all ages to be more productive and to use downtime. Like I'm on my phone when I'm at the doctor's office answering emails and checking my homework and interacting with my friends and updating on the news. And that's a lot of things that I would do on a computer if I was sitting at a desk, but sometimes I don't have that opportunity because I am busy running around in the world. So I think smartphones are very useful for the average person. I don't think necessarily like it's this big progressive, like, oh my God, we're changing the world because we have a smartphone. I just think it's, world, I think it's honestly, helpful. I think on, it's incredibly wait, 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 helpful. Wait, okay, wait. I, I just want to make clear, cause I, some, first of all, some shade was thrown our way because we never said smartphones, right? We both yeah. love smartphones. I'm yeah. gonna use my smartphone right yeah. now to read someone I agree with, okay? <laughs> so from Instagram, someone said, personally, I like having a smartphone. I can do work when I don't have access to a computer or I can't pull out my iPad and work on that. It can get distracting when you're trying to do something and you jump into the rabbit hole of Twitter and YouTube videos, but I think that mostly comes down to self-control and focusing on the task you need to do. Exactly. Yeah. Which, is the, which is what yeah. we're trying to say. Oh, yeah. Like, so don't so take what it as a against my argument here. Okay, you said the answer to equality was smart Hold on, let's hear what Teddy has to say. Let me come in. Let me come in. So right now I think the biggest issue is I'm someone who agrees with a socially um, having our governments come together and, and actually spend money on programs which benefit these people. I do believe smartphones are very important in our job market right now, but I don't think it should go to teens, if anything. If anything, maybe, you know, ha work on lower phone plans for people in low income housing, for example, you know. So, because sure. I do think that that isn't just a luxury. However, if you're a teen in high school, I didn't get my phone to like the end of the 10th grade, okay? You can live with it. I hated it, I hated it, but you can live without it. I do think that we are too dependent on our smartphones, but I think that's just a part of how technology and society is progressing. I think that when you have such technology and easy accessibility to so many features on a smartphone, of course you can use it, of course you're going to be dependent on it. What's with the one chip challenge? It's a challenge started by Pocky, the makers of the Carolina Reaper chip. It's simple, eat a single chip and post the proof on Instagram or Twitter. The chip is made with the Carolina Reaper pepper, reportedly the hottest oh. chili pepper on earth. And it's caught on. News anchors have eaten it on air and vomited. Oh, Natalie's okay. losing her breath. Oh, oh, Natalie <laughs> threw up. Even Shaq tried it and could barely keep it together. Oh, it was hot. <laughs> Somebody got some milk. <laughs> <laughs> One lucky person stands to win a year's supply of Pocky's regular chips. But people are arguably as interested in the internet fame as they are in the prize. What's your take? Are you into the one chip challenge? Or is this the height of internet stupidity? Honestly, yikes. But I mean, this challenge might seem ridiculous, but honestly, it's such a smart business move in terms of that company. I mean, to get people to pay for their own pain, I mean, that's like some next level mind manipulation. I mean, I might just start a company with like all these social challenges, getting people to do painful stuff. I'm gonna be super rich. Why not? This is brilliant, I mean. I feel like what you just said is so problematic because it's just like, you find people's, a pleasure off of other people's pain. I think that's disgusting. Yo, hold no, on. no, and I'm gonna say something. I'm like, not the one doing okay, it. Okay, but don't accuse me. So, so the fact that you're not doing it means that it's okay for other people to put themselves through pain. I feel that's disgusting because there was a challenge earlier, like last year, where people would line up in like here and people would run through 
and your job is to get to the end of the line while people throw their school bags at you. What? So I mean what happens that. if somebody dies? Child. Okay, but it's, my their, it's no. their own choice. They choose to do it themselves. But here's the thing no why it's so problematic. Them. But here's the thing They're why it's so by the likes so they but want their on. ego to help like, But here's yeah. the thing why it's so problematic. It's the fact that we're feeding into peer pressure all the time. And it's the fact that we have to feel inclined to doing a challenge just to fit in. Okay. That's the problem. Here's a bit of like an opposing look on that though. Think of all the challenges we have online. These are self-inflicted pain challenges, exactly. okay? It's I think it's funny when people do stuff that's kind of stupid and there's been literally shows on TV that have run for years and years and years of videos of people doing stuff. Now with the one chip challenge, I think that there's a significant chance of it may be worse for some people than others. So I think you have to sniff that chip and determine if you can handle the spiciness. <laughs> where I'm not about internet challenges is when people are doing things that actually cause bodily harm. Yeah. And that's why I'm agreeing with you on that. But but I'm agreeing if someone's gonna be really stupid and eat a really spicy chip, which we might do later. Let's see, Carmen, she, she tweeted with the hashtag my side. She said, TBH, I think the one chip challenge is stupid. You happy mm. at this? Anything ending in challenge is kind of dumb. Mm. Uh, look at that nod. I mean, if you like doing stupid <laughs> things for views, go ahead. And I think that's the important part. Yeah. I like doing stupid things, not, not only for views, I've done stupid things off camera just because they're fun. Yeah. And I think yeah. as long as you know the risk going into it, as long as you're old enough to make these decisions, sure. it should be okay. I just think, my thing is, it's not the chip challenge, it's the it's the idea of, of the fact that we have to feel, to fit in, we have to be like everybody else. The fact that, you know, I'm gonna do this because everybody else is gonna do it. So just like most internet trends, I find this one pretty hilarious, but I don't really like spicy food, so I don't think I will try the one chip challenge. However, though, I do, I have been seeing it online, and I think it's pretty ent entertaining. I do wish, though, it was kind of more like the ALS bucket challenge, ice bucket challenge, because of, I feel like when a trend becomes super big and it has a good cause towards it, that's always more enjoyable, but when it's like, the one shift challenge or like the Kylie like lip challenge, like those are just more for like entertainment purposes. So I think it's best when we can combine the two and do it for a good cause at the end of the day. I'm about to do the hashtag one chip challenge. Reason I'm doing it is because I have a, a long history of eating spicy stuff. I had two ghost peppers at the same time once. I will cry, but just know it's because my eyes are too sensitive for my uh, tough soul. Alrighty, let us begin. Here we go. This seems like really extra precaution here. Raid the world's hottest pepper, Carolina Reaper Madness. I feel like I'm opening a bomb. I don't know, I'm us I usually don't eat pepper, but I think sometimes I could take it. Any last words, the Reaper's waiting. Um, I'm going to do better than Shaq. That's my uh, last words, so. Uh, Oh man, that smells spicy. <laughs> it's not that bad at all. Imagine drinking just like straight hot sauce. Like my throat is messed up right now. This is actually totally fine. <laughs> I feel it on the this side. Okay, I need some ice cream. Okay, I'm starting to sweat. Okay, yeah. I... Yeah, no, it's totally fine. Yeah, I licked the chip and it fell out of my mouth because my body was rejecting it. It's, I'm sorry, I'm sorry Shaq. I'm sorry, news anchor woman who threw up. My throat's a little bit scratchy. I'd like a glass of milk. Finish this first. I can't even feel my tongue. Okay, I'm fine now. I can't feel my tongue. Like it's gotten to the point where my tongue is just gone. Like it's hot, but I mean, so is Tabasco sauce. More milk, please. Do you have a napkin? Okay, I'm gonna use bread as a napkin. 
Yeah, I'm done. I'm done. Still no milk drink. Still no bread eaten. I will hit up this ice cream later, just because I really want to eat some ice cream. But as far as winning the challenge goes, I really think I've done it. Larry David is in hot water. The comedian hosted Saturday Night Live recently, and in his opening monologue, he made a controversial joke. I've often wondered, if I'd, if I'd grown up in Poland, when Hitler came to power and was sent to a concentration camp, would I still be checking out women in the camp? <laughs> I think I would, you know? The CEO of the Anti-Defamation League, a Jewish civil rights organization, tweeted that the comedian had taken it too far. But others suggested there are more important issues to be offended about, and that tackling touchy subject matter is the point of comedy. Others pointed out that David himself is Jewish. What do you think? Did this joke go too far, or is it all fair game in the name of comedy? So if you ever heard me complain about anything, you'll know the influence that Larry David has in my life. However, I'm going to try to take a step back and look at it objectively. And I think my issue with all these outrage regarding comedians making these jokes are they treat them as if they're in a vacuum. I mean, if an anti-Semite had made this joke, or if Larry Dip, a, a Jewish, a prominent Jewish comedian who's been doing stuff like this as a shtick for the past who knows how long, if they're both gonna be treated with the same reaction, I feel like people aren't really looking inward enough and trying to see why people might find these things funny. If it's possible to be both empathetic and take these, these terrible, tragic events which have occurred and try to get a little bit of a laugh. You know what, I really agree with you on part of that, but I think in this case, it's the right time to actually call it racism, anti-Semitism. You know what, I have to get on here because I believe that there are things in the world that you should not make light of because they are too heavy and because there was too much personal sacrifice and too much like just horrendous things that happened the holocaust was a genocide people died very yeah. brutally very regularly very badly i think it is never okay to make fun of something that has that much history to it and that much bad blood and bad yeah. history yeah. i just don't think it's okay that's what like I, mean. You I mean this is the right case to use the word racism but in other cases people should not maybe yeah, here's, here's, right here, okay here's my take on this whole situation I, although I may not agree with the things that he said, I respect him because of the fact that if you're filtered, if you're unfiltered enough to think it, and, and then you should be unfiltered enough to say it. When you're walking into the comedy, whatever, you're expecting a comedian who's gonna make you laugh. I'm not gonna walk into a strip club and be offended that, I'm not gonna walk into a strip club and be offended by a male stripper stripping in front of me. I'm not, because that's what I came for. Like, no, I didn't come for the male stripper, but I came, I came for the stripper. And so I'm not gonna be offended by what I see. And it's the same thing. If, you, if you're gonna watch a comedian, you shouldn't be offended by what the comedian's gonna I so, just, yeah, let's, and oh I will uh, read a tweet uh, from Luke using the hashtag my side. He said, at sides, the most funny jokes when you're older have a dark side. Who cares? Let the man joke about Jews and he's a Jew. So who cares? Let it go. I still think it comes back to the fact that there was, there's too much still it, there. It's so set, much it's, bad okay, blood if though. If you're gonna set these lines up, and I think, what about the, the sympathy that can be created by these kinds but of jokes? But that wasn't no, funny. Listen, not, like, obviously, I wouldn't have made the joke. I didn't laugh at the joke. It wasn't for me. I don't know who it was intended for, but it, I'm not that surprised. Have we really gotten to the point where a comedian cannot even make a joke anymore without the PC police attacking them? Like, if he's Jewish and wants to make a joke about something that happened to Jewish people, and it's a self-deprecating joke, he's not hurting anyone, he's not making fun of anyone, then I don't see what the problem is. Oh, oh hi! Here. Hello, friends. Hi, How's it going? How are you, man? Hey. How are you? Nice to see you. Hey, friends. Hi. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. You guys are passionate. I like it. Thank you. We really go at it sometimes. <laughs> you know a lot of funny facts about William Lyon Mackenzie King. I do. What is the strangest fact that you know? 
The strangest fact that I know, uh, and by far the strangest fact about William Lyon McKenzie King, although there are so many, he was a beautiful man. Um, he uh, sincerely believed that he could communicate with dead spirits yes. who would tell him how to run the country. No, I believe that. Yeah, yeah. so he went and, and- His dead mother, right? His dead mother, right. Wilfred Laurier, and his dead dog. He would do seances with them and believe they gave him advice on how to get us out of the Great Depression, for example. <laughs> we were talking about comedy a little bit earlier. You were. What do you think about Larry David? Do you think he went too far, and do you think there is a too far in comedy? Oh, for sure there's a too far, but I don't think it's about subject matter. The reason we're talking about Larry David right now isn't because he joked about the Holocaust, it's because he made a bad joke about the Holocaust. Mm. Anytime you're gonna tread on a really sensitive subject, I don't think you can say we can't go there because pretty much any subject you can name, I could probably name five stand-ups with amazing jokes about them. Yeah. Yeah. But the difference is they were funny jokes mm -hmm. and they, they, they went in the right direction. So mm. one rule in comedy that I'm sure you guys are familiar with is the idea of punching up, not punching down. So if you're gonna talk about a delicate subject, uh, you know, like the Holocaust or like anything else, uh, the goal is always to uh, target the people in power or target the oppressors, target the people who committed the atrocity when you're talking about the Holocaust. Never make jokes that punch down on the victims, for example. So you guys write pretty much fake news stories regularly, I and do. some people seem to think that those are real. It's interesting, because we started the Beaverton in a, in a world in which there was such a thing as the truth, and now, <laughs> and now we're in a world where there isn't anymore, apparently, um, because facts and everything are just subject to debate and opinion. Um, so the idea of fake news took on a whole new meaning, obviously, in the Donald Trump era. Uh, but one thing that even since the beginning has happened is people online Line, maybe more than in print, are a little bit more gullible. And when you talk in a newspaper journalistic manner, mm. people tend to believe you. So sometimes, especially when we first started out and we weren't particularly well known yet, we would have articles go viral, not because people loved them as much, but because people thought they were real. So one of those articles that went viral was yes. the, um, the phone bill thing. Yes. <laughs> about, I would point out, again, I mean, not that anyone needs to improve his reputation, but he was very lovely about this, and Chris Hadfield <laughs> does not actually hold a grudge about this, but he should, um, because we've heard from multiple people that every time he does a book signing now, people will come up to him and be like, I'm so sorry about that phone bill. It's so ridiculous. <laughs> Uh, so I feel bad for that. But yeah, that went viral, and not just in Canada, where he's obviously a hero, but he's such an international celebrity that that went viral in places, not just where they didn't know the Beaverton, but where satire doesn't really exist. We, were, <laughs> we did an interview with a, 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 a Chinese uh, newspaper, and they had, you know, we were trying to talk about the story, and it became very clear we needed to back up and talk about why we weren't in jail for spreading lies. Oh. Uh, oh. So what is the impact of Trump on comedy writers? Ultimately, you know, in, in Comedy, it's specifically satirical comedy, you know, the comedian is supposed to be the court jester who gets to make fun of the king. And we get to say things to the king that no one else could say because we're doing it in a joke. But now uh, the king is a court jester, he's a joke. Mm. So what does the court jester do? Uh, because you can't make fun of the king because he doesn't have a sense of humor even though he was, a, he was an absurdist himself. Mm. So now you're in this crazy situation where it's almost like shouting into a void because you, you recognize that with Donald Trump himself, it's almost impossible to top what he actually does. You can't out absurd him. On that cheering note. Accomplishment. You mentioned that detachment, and we can definitely see yeah. that. When it comes to political gaffes, the US as a sandwich would be a mile long stuff. <laughs> Canada would be like a half eaten peanut butter jelly sandwich. Yeah. In your opinion, what can our politicians do to get a little bit more spicier and easier to satirize? Ooh, well, I mean, I would say I like that our politicians have maintained a veneer of sanity, <laughs> but I mean, we're interesting in our own way. I mean, we have, a, we have this, you know, BuzzFeed listicle of a prime minister uh, who, I, you know, whatever you may think of his policies, he actively courts celebrity, which is interesting because that is something that I personally haven't seen before. I mean, his dad was a celebrity, but never felt like he was courting it, whereas Justin Trudeau is. So, you know, one thing that's gonna be very interesting going forward is how much uh, Jagmeet Singh goes the same way because he's obviously very popular online as well. So one thing that could happen, and whether we want it to or not, I don't know, is is this kind of war of, of, of internet fame and, and the competition, and then poor Andrew Shearer will just be in the back, like still <laughs> still making robocalls calls on his line landline. So the Beaverton sounds really wicked. Mm -hmm. When can we check it out? Thank you so much for asking. So we air uh, every Wednesday night at uh, 10 p.m. on Comedy Network, and then we're online the next day, so you can watch it anytime at thebeaverton.com. So we're gonna play a wicked cool game called Onside Offside, so right. you and Teddy are gonna play, and so essentially what the game is, is Michael and Frank are gonna ask you guys some questions, <clears throat> all comedy related, and you guys are gonna thumbs up if you like it, and thumbs down if you're not. Offside or onside, when TV shows use laugh tracks to make it seem like actual people are laughing. Three. Three. Two, one. 
Boo. <laughs> I like that sideways. Okay. <laughs> You're almost there. <laughs> All right. Just don't, there you there go. There we go. <laughs> Onside or offside? Dad jokes. Three, two, two one. one. Go. Boo. Why are you offside for dad jokes? <laughs> offside for dad jokes because the problem is, it's not that they're bad, although they are terrible. What? The problem is now they've gotten this internet acclaim, so all our dads think they're like YouTube celebrities <laughs> just waiting to be discovered, and it makes Thanksgiving terrible. Dad, you are funny. Next one. No, you're not. Okay, so on-site or off-site, people who say L-O-L -L out loud in person in in-person conversations. Three, Three two, two, one. They're tr ah. I feel like it's not, it's not like post-ironic, you know? It depends on the context. If it's sarcastic, I would go thumbs down. But on one hand, some people just don't laugh naturally. <laughs> and they're just one of those people who's like, and like, even though they love it, and so like, at least now they have something to do rather than just go like, mm. <laughs> mm. That's such an old person. Next question. Goodness. <laughs> Onside or offside, following up a joke with too soon. Three, Three two, two, one. one. If you're just gonna say too soon, then it, like, you don't need to say too soon. Give it more than that. I think it's kind of disrespectful if you're gonna say too soon for something that was actually just a tragedy. So, this in this scenario, I'm the one who told the joke and I'm saying too soon? Or someone yeah. is saying too soon to yeah. a joke I just no, told? No, no, you're, you're, you're the joke. person you tell the joke and then you're like, oh, too I see. soon. Okay, no, I'm going thumbs down for that. Okay. That's, uh, that's ridiculous. Just own <laughs> your joke. Be the Larry David we all wanna be. No. Thank you so much for coming and hanging out with us. So guys, I think it was a great show tonight. There's been some really interesting action coming through online, so I want to talk about it. A lot of it around uh, the, the Larry David um, debate. So this came in during the live show. Somebody asked, it sounded like Larry David was making fun of toxic masculinity. Do you think that we might have twisted this joke and he was actually making fun of or poking at the idea of men being interested in women and going after women even during the Holocaust? Did anyone ever consider that? I mean, no, that's think? why the Harvey Weinstein joke is what preceded right. it. Like, I, I was someone who, you know, it's kind of hard to admit that you find a joke funny when so many people are, are so offended by it. I'm. Did you find the joke funny? I did. Yeah. I, I, when funny? I listened to it the first time, I definitely cracked a smile. I definitely giggled a bit. I'm not saying like, it, I definitely saw the, the badness and the offensiveness in it. And that's why you heard a bunch of oohs from the SNL cast. But again, as knowing Larry David, he's someone who lampoons these things, and I totally but see you, that angle. But, but yeah, do you know why it does have to be a joke. comment? It no. really, if you... Let me jump in here, because like, as the only lady on the cast today, yes. um, it kind of makes me angry that he went after two things that are you shouldn't go after. You shouldn't go after consent, and you shouldn't go after the Holocaust, and you're really just, especially right now when all these sexual assault allegations are coming out, and it's just really bad to joke about that kind of thing, go after and say like, oh yeah, I, Guys will always be predators in the fact that they okay, won't think look and be gross like that no matter what. Like, I think people just don't know the context of Larry David. You said it's pathetic. That's what, what Larry David's supposed to be. He's a pathetic per. You watch the show. But that doesn't be take away from the fact that the pathetic. content matter is not acceptable. Okay, we also have... Okay, I, I don't know that we're going to agree on it right here. We also okay. have a tweet coming in about the dumb phone topic, and it said it might be hard at first to take a break from the smartphone, but I think taking a break from information overload might be a good thing for health. So I want to ask you guys, if it's not buying a dumb phone, what is a good way to take that break from the information overload that we all experience? I think, um, I think it'd be great just to leave your phone somewhere and just lock it away, you know, have some sleep, because that's what we lack right now. Like, I'm lacking sleep because I'm because on of your devices. Smartphone? And I admit it, because <clears throat> okay. it's very prevalent among teens right now. And I think, lock it away, you know, do what something for fun. Yeah, just, yeah, that, and just making the decision for yourself to make a change. Like, I wanted to do the, the one chip challenge, but then I had to recheck myself and say, no, I don't want to do that, because it's not what, a, it's not what I'm about, really, because I don't want to feed into, you know, doing it because everyone's doing it. You just have to make the decision for yourself and, and act through. You know, I, I definitely think on this whole idea of like the dumb phone thing that you do need to take a break. And I think sometimes a good break is leaving your phone at home and going for a hike. 
Yeah, Although I know yeah, you're not doing that, Layla, because you use your phone to even calm down before you go to bed. I what take you said. my phone everywhere. Okay, so the last one, I'm just going to bring up this last tweet that came in about the violence in Texas. And it was from Jason, and he was uh, saying, I get frustrated when I see a mass shooting because there's so much being said about ending gun violence, but it seems to get ignored and not brought up. And you were saying this. I want to talk to you. What would you like to see happen out of this? What is the solution here? I think... The solutions are very obvious, but it's unfair to just say we need these solutions because the reason you hear so much and nothing happens is because there is one political party mm. which is being very funded by the NRA and which relies on them for the support of their voters who is going to do nothing. And whenever this happens, they're just going to say, let's not politicize this tragedy. Let's whenever you say pray. it's a gun control issue, they're going to say it's a mental health issue and then they're going to do nothing but the mental health issues. That's, That's it. it. That's all I got for you. Good one, guys. We got more for you. <laughs> <laughs>